soon as I was born, she said they wrapped me up in uh, a blanket and then covered me in cedar. They cleaned me up, they wrapped me in cedar again. Cedar was all over me. She said, your first bath was in cedar water. She said it was a very good experience for her. And my mother said, when she was very young, she said she remembers sitting under a shaded tree with the grandmother. And she was telling her grandchildren that when their babies are gonna be born, it's gonna be a white man to hold a baby. And she said, it's not gonna be good because right then and there, some of that baby's heritage is being pulled away from him. We're not supposed to be healthy. We're all supposed to be, we all should have disappeared. We were supposed to disappear and we didn't disappear. And the reason we didn't is because those grandmothers kept those stories alive. A birthing center can birth and make possible that kind of cultural knowledge to be there so that they can take that and find a way to use it. We've had a really long time vision for a birth center. We've been dreaming about this for you know, since we started Seventh Generation Midwives, we really, we knew we wanted a space for our women to have their babies in, but we really wanted it to be midwife-led, and we had this really strong vision that it was going to be like an indigenous-led, and you know, aboriginal focus space that was going to be really like warm, welcoming, culturally safe for everyone to come to. The way that we approach healthcare, the way that we use that indigenous philosophies, that world view that we have is just, it's unique, it's different. We think it's really special, it's really sacred, but it's really, it's a good approach. How are you guys doing? Good, good. How is it? Baby's growing every week. Yeah. Has your elder shared any, any other ceremonies or teachings with you that you wanted to incorporate? Well, not yet. We haven't had anyone really in the family do a traditional birth, um, so it's all brand new to me. I'm at that point in my life where I'm trying to get closer to the culture and then be able to provide the baby with all the knowledge that I have and more. You know, I really believe that creating that, that kind of basis for a baby to come into come into the world, all this knowledge mm -hmm. that you're passing on to to the baby. It's our identity to be born into that and grow having that connection of where we come from I think is really powerful and amazing. I was so nervous. <laughs> I was so scared but at the same time I've always wanted to be a mom and then to find out that it's happening right now that I'm going to be a mom and I'm going to have a baby was just the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life. Aboriginal midwives just felt like such a natural choice because that's who I feel like I can connect right away with. And I couldn't think of a better group of women to ask to help me through the journey of, of having my baby. The relationships between a service provider and their client could be as important as the prescriptions that I write or the importance of the relationship that a midwife has with that new baby that she touches in terms of then being a mentor and an auntie to that baby for the rest of their life. When you're in labor, it's a very powerful time, but it's also a very vulnerable time. And to have someone kind of make funny faces at you or question why you want to do something or not under not have that understanding of why maybe you want to keep your placenta when normally they would regard it as medical waste. I think Aboriginal midwifery can really create that safe space for people to be able to create the ceremony that they want and recognize it as a ceremony rather than just something that's happening. As a woman, then we become the creator so we're carrying that sacred spirit to walk on the earth. Our creation story, of course, is before man. So it's the stars and the sun, the moon, and the four directions and the seeds. And so when we think about woman and life 
that's how far back we're thinking. We know that identity matters in terms of our health and well-being and that if I want to take the opportunity to re-engage with my knowledge, my history, then I think for our people it's extra important because it's linked to our healing. So having support, not having to explain why it's important to have a lot of family with us, for example, or if we're disconnected from our family because of things like child welfare intervention or uh, residential schools or all of the kind of colonial violences that happen to us, that we're not going to be judged for it, that we're going to be received with care and kindness is a big deal. To have that experience of being received as a whole person, I think it does amazing things for a family. I love you, Mom. I love you, too. I come from both parents who had gone to residential school. I didn't feel that it was instilled into our generation to pass on, to keep, to grab on to any part of the language. I'm trying to learn my language and learn more about where I come from, who my family is, my traditional culture. And if anything, the baby is just strengthened that need to find those things and to learn. I think it's an extremely sacred time. The baby is making its journey from the spirit world. And what I've been taught is that children pick their parents. And I've been chosen to be a parent right now. And that means the world to me. I feel so honored. And I feel a huge responsibility coming up. So I've been getting ready, getting my, my space ready. I have started to smudge every morning, and that's a part of... Uh, me discovering who I am. My little Benojis growing up so fast. <laughs> what does Benojis mean? Baby. Because this is my first baby, I worry about whether I'm going to be able to be a good mom. I have no idea what to expect. It was really nice going to the birth center. I saw Diane's face and I instantly felt some relief because uh, she's been that, that person for me, um, that safe person to talk to and uh, put my trust in. Labor was hard and fast. I had uh, originally planned to be at the birth center for the whole time, but the hospital was always an option and I felt really comfortable going to the hospital with Diane. It was a beautiful birth. Mm. Diane was right there the whole time. My mom was there, my sister was there, and that's what mattered. I said I had those supports. <laughs> On Sunday, uh, we're having a naming ceremony, so we're really excited for that. <laughs> They're also going to be able to bring their families in to bond with that baby in, in a way that they might not have otherwise and, you know, give that mother and baby all the support the community can and their family can. If we pour all of that into the next generation of babies, then my hope is that we're going to have an, a healthier next generation and that that next generation is going to do the same and have another healthier generation and we're going to heal a lot of the the hurt that we have in our communities and make our families and our nation stronger. Worked through the night 
and your midwife, Diane, worked so hard and she did so much for us, making sure that you came safely. You did. You did. My boy.